In this video, we're going to see how to use threplace to include fragments into HTML with Timeleaf. You can see in our current page that we have a navbar that would look good on just about any page on our site, but the trick is it's all included in one HTML file. So if I wanted to replicate this navbar on other pages, I'd have to copy and paste this entire unit on every page in my application. And while that seems simple and straightforward, it's a bad idea. Indeed, duplicate blocks is one of Sonar Cube's seven deadly sins, so it's something that we want to avoid. Reason being, what if we wanted to change the nav? We'd have to touch every single page and change the nav in every single page. A better idea might be to make our own separate HTML component that can be included into other HTML pages before they are finally rendered for the browser. And this is incredibly powerful because we see that we can pull content from many different places. So I'm going to right click on this unit and say cut. And I'm going to remember that I'm on line 15 because I'm going to need to put something there to include this back in later. Now underneath the templates directory, which is under the resources directory, I'm going to add a new directory. We'll call this one fragments. And this is where our little nuggets of HTML will live that we can include in grander pages. Now within this, I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new HTML file, and we'll call this one top nav. You see it automatically gives us that HTML extension. Now it thinks we're doing a brand new page, so it gives us all the framework with HTML, head, body, so on and so forth. But remember, this content is simply going to be included into another page. So I'm going to paste all of that content and save. Now, one funny thing that you'll see is it gives us a red line on our th attributes because it doesn't see the import for our th tag library. But once again, remember, this is going to get included into this grander page before the page is presented to the browser. And it's the browser that's actually going to resolve all of these libraries up here. So by the time the final page is rendered, everything that's needed will be present. I mentioned we took that existing navbar out of line 15, so let's go ahead and add it back again. And this is where we get to explore a new time leaf attribute. So we'll just make a div tag, a normal old div tag, but inside of that we're going to use a new to us attribute called th colon replace. And then we'll say equal sign. We need to give it a directory that's relative to resources. So under resources we have fragments, so we'll say fragments and then slash and then top nav, which is the name of our file. Now things get a little interesting here because I need to say colon colon and then I need to say what I want to include from that top nav page. Now what I mean by that is we don't have to include this entire top nav page. Instead what we can do is we can put divs in here and we can only request one div at a time so this top nav can be essentially a library of different things that we can share within our app. So to do that we'll need to go ahead and wrap this all in a div. We'll say div and then th colon fragment equals navbar. So we're calling this component a navbar. That's going to give us an open closed div tag. So we'll go ahead and put the closed div down below. And then a bit of tidying up, we'll just do an indent there. So div th fragment. Remember, th fragment equals navbar. When we come back to our start HTML, we have th replace. And with th replace, we give relative directory the name of the file, colon, colon, and then the name of the div that we want to include from that file. So we'll call this navbar. We'll keep that entire unit in double quotes, and then we'll simply do an open close tag just like so. Once the application reloads, we can refresh our page and we see that nothing changes. And that's good news because that's exactly what we want. You notice that the final output is the same as it was before. We've simply taken the shareable component and we've put it into its own page. Now what we're going to do is see how we can use this on multiple pages, but to do so we need to have multiple pages, which we don't really have just yet. But that's okay if we scroll up a little bit on our bootstrap from the forms navbar we started with, we'll see that there's another one here that has options for different pages. So we're going to borrow a bit of that. First of all, notice we have this nav class. So I'm going to grab that because I see that has a few attributes that I might need. Now go back to my top nav HTML, give us a little bit of room. 
And let's compare these two. Okay, so we see navbar light, BG light. It looks like there's one more class or qualifier that we need to add, which is this navbar expand LG. That's the cool thing about Bootstrap and CSS is that you notice these are all just different CSS styles that are applying. And if we want that navbar that also has literal navigation on it, we simply need to add one more CSS class. Now I see home, features, pricing, so on and so forth. It looks like that is included in this collapse navbar collapse unit here. We probably don't need all of the stuff that I've highlighted here, but I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and I'm going to paste it within this nav component, just like so. And then I will remove a couple things I don't need. So we really only need a couple of menu options, one for home and then one for a new page that we'll create called, we'll call it sustainability. So for home, we'll simply replace the href with a slash, which means take me back to root or essentially take me back to home. For sustainability, we want to show a sustainability report card. So we're going to make a new endpoint slash sustainability. And then we'll give it the name sustainability. So in other words, sustainability means you enter all of your specimens of plants. And then we give you a report card that says, here are plants that you have that are very good for sustainability. Maybe something like the Eastern Redbud that makes its own fertilizer or the pawpaw, which is a native edible. And then it could say, here are some that are more invasive, aggressive, and need to be replaced, like honeysuckle, pear tree, or the Osage orange. That's the idea. We don't have the logic figured out just yet for that. Uh, we simply want to start with this endpoint. It's often customary to have the form at the very right side of an AF bar. So I'm going to move this down, place it right after that div, but within the nav. And then I'm going to restart our application so we can take a look. Now we'll hit refresh so you can watch the difference in this top nav with our new look and feel. So see, sure enough, we have home. We see home takes us to home. And then sustainability is going to take us to a 404 because we don't have that page and we have search on the right side. The nice thing is, in case you have any doubt, you now have a bit of confirmation that this unit here is indeed importing all of this over here because we just made all of the changes in this top nav.html. So let's go ahead and make an endpoint for sustainability. We'll make this one fairly straightforward. We can start with our mapping for home or root and then actually take some things out that we can take out to simplify it. So boom, and we'll say request mapping sustainability. Now we'll take out all the specimen stuff that we have here, and then we'll simply return sustainability. Change the method name to sustainability. And for the moment, we don't need this model, so let's keep things simple and only add co complexity when needed. So we have a very basic endpoint now where if, if a request is made for sustainability, it's going to return sustainability. And what that means is it's just like our default endpoint mapping when it returns start, it's going to look for a page. In this case, it's going to look for a page called start HTML. But in our case, it's going to look for a page called sustainability.html. So now we need to make that page. Let's go to resources templates and we'll say new HTML file. And I'm going to paste that just because that's a really easy word to misspell and I don't want a misspelling to distract us. So we'll say sustainability HTML. Go ahead and add it. Now let's borrow some of this logic that we have in our existing start page. Just highlight copy and then in sustainability, delete everything that's there and paste. And I'm going to take out anything that is not related to sustainability. So essentially the specimen that appears at the top and then the form where a user can enter specimen details. We have a really simple page right now. Now we don't have any service or DAO logic for sustainability, so I'm simply going to put in a label so that we know we're on the sustainability page and not another page. BR to give ourselves a line break, and then your sustainability rating is, and we can say, we'll just hard code in 100% at the moment and save, and let's go ahead and redeploy. With the application redeployed, we can now test things out. Note that I click on home, I stay on the home page. Now watch what happens when I click on sustainability. Your sustainability rating is 100%.
I can click back and forth and it looks like this nav is static and it's only the content which is changing. And that's the idea. So now we have our navigation in one single place where we can add edit any new classes or any new pages that we wish to add to our navigation. And we have a search bar that's available on every page in our application. So that makes it much easier for the user. You can search from anywhere without having to click on a dedicated search screen. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.